Since I got you, you stole my heart away with the things that you do. And lately, you drive me crazy, baby. Maybe that's why I escape in your love. There's no place. Um, what's going on, guys? Um, hope you guys are ready for today's video. I know you guys clicked because it's something emotional, and it is something very emotional. Um, this video is regarding Shyla, my beautiful pregnant girlfriend, soon to be fiance, I ain't saying too much. But um, this is regarding her and her life and her past. Um, a lot of you guys were commenting on the fact that she didn't post anything for Father's Day and stuff like that. And the truth is um, that none of the LS gang, no one, none of you guys watching me right now or even know her background or where she's really been and where she's what she's been through. And I really want that to be out. She didn't even want to really talk about it. She never wants to talk about it. She doesn't think it's that big of a deal, but I told her that it's a good idea that she should just to let you guys a little bit into her life um, because it is a big deal. And I like, I think a lot of people are quick to judge someone um, more if they don't know their background, don't know where they're from, or don't know what they've been through. It's hard to respect someone if you don't really know. So I think it's definitely good that you guys kind of hear um, her story. And I just hope that you guys are really mindful and you guys really take it serious um, because it is very serious. So I guess I'll just go ahead and let Shyla take it away. So, hi. Everyone, I don't know why I feel so nervous. I feel like my anxiety level is like steady rising right now. And this is something that I was thinking about all last night. And it's something that I was really on the fence about. But when we started this, we committed to letting you guys know the good, the bad, the everything in between. This all started on Father's Day when I wished my mom a happy Father's Day, my stepdad a happy Father's Day, my father-in-law a happy Father's Day, and everyone was asking why wouldn't I wish my own father a happy Father's Day, and I got so many DMs with a lot of like you guys just like curiously asking like what about your dad, like oh what about your dad? And then I got like nasty DMs and just people who think they know it all when really they know nothing. So basically, I don't have a relationship with my father. And he wasn't around much of me growing up. And when he was around, it was really bad and really toxic. And as an adult, I tried to have that relationship that I never got as a child. And sadly, it just failed miserably and I wish that I never even put myself in a position to be let down again and honestly that is like the worst part of it all like being let down your whole life and then just as an adult thinking that like your relationship's a whole new dynamic and it's not and ultimately still and just getting hurt worse than like I'm gonna give you guys a quick rundown. Beginning of my life, just to let you guys know, I have an older sister, and then there's me, and then I have a younger brother, who you guys have probably seen on this channel at least once or twice, or you see him on my Instagram. We're super close, I see him like every week. Growing up was very rough. I had a really, really rough childhood, and I'm sure so many people do, but I'm so grateful that my rough childhood and adolescence and all of that still didn't stop me from being the person that I am today and won't stop me from the woman I'm becoming and especially the mother I'm becoming. So growing up, I really had a chaotic life. Like my life was kind of a mess to say the least. Like I moved a lot. My parents were married 17 years and definitely not happily. Like my dad was extremely physically, emotionally abusive towards my mom. A majority of my life, my dad was in and out of jail. So like, I'm talking like, I remember in kindergarten, for an instance, I remember literally my dad stealing my mom's car keys and just leaving for a week and like partying with his friends and coming back and like her car was like ruined all the windows were like broken out and i remember that morning like my mom just crying and like we had to take the bus to school and i remember you know kids be telling all your business and my my kindergarten teachers asked me why i was late and i told them all my business i was like my dad was yelling at my mom and he just stole the keys and he left and we haven't seen him in a couple of days and that's how it was. My dad would leave for months at a time, weeks, not to mention when he would go to jail for months at a time or, so I really didn't have my dad and my mom in turn, I really didn't have her all that much either. She was working two or three jobs, 
90% of my life. Like she just, let me explain to you guys. She just quit her second job five years ago. Like that's not even that long. Mind you, my sister's five years older than me, so it was extremely hard for her to grow up and think that's normal as well, to see her dad constantly beating your mom. And I mean like some crazy stuff. Like I would see like handfuls of hair around the house that had been pulled out, like things that like children should not see. Like that shit will traumatize you. And like screaming and like my parents used to like use us in the middle of their fights. Like, look what you're doing to your daughter. Look what you're doing to your son. And like, it was just bad. And it affected my sister a lot in um, different ways that it affected me. And she ended up. Okay. Sorry, I just need to get it together. And she ended up just like. Going down the wrong path, like, you know, like, I think, like, that could have easily been me. Like, I could have easily made those same decisions. And, like, my life could have been so different. Sorry about that. I had to just take a moment to regroup. Like, I'm passionate about my family. I love my siblings. I love my mom. Okay, I just needed to woosah. So, <clears throat> My sister from the age of I believe 12 or 13 up until current has struggled with what I believe is like severe depression as well as extreme like substance abuse. Substance abuse is also something really common in my family. Um, my dad was under the influence of a lot of things. I don't even know what it was like but now that I look back on it I think of things and i'm like this shit is crazy like i could write a movie on this like i just can't even so he struggled with substance abuse a lot which kind of i feel like influenced my sister to take the same road unfortunately so my sister pretty much moved out at the age of 14. so i believe i was still in elementary school and my parents my mom was trying to get away from my dad she knew that like this was not good for her. She felt like her life was in danger at this point and like her kids' lives were just not going at all the way she had planned. Like mind you, my mom is like the, the primary breadwinner. Like my mom has done, gone above and beyond for me like her whole life. Long story short, we end up moving with my mom and when I say moving with my mom, we ended up moving. Oh, this is so hard to talk about. My mom ended up leaving my dad and was literally living in her car like legit living in her car while we were with our dad and he would still leave he would still be gone and like i just had to take care of myself like so i just wouldn't go to school sometimes and like i would take care of my little brother and like that's just what i knew how to do and so finally we were able to go with our mom and we slept on one of her friend's couches for like six months to a year, maybe it was more. Shout out to you, Violet. I love you. Thank you for letting us stay in your one bedroom apartment with you and your kids. This is so hard. Like, this is just like really crazy point in my life. Like, and we slept on her couch and like, just that, like now that I'm older and I like, <laughs> maybe it's cause I'm pregnant. I'm so emotional, but like, I don't know. Maybe it's cause I'm older now and I see like, like everything that my mom like went through for us to have like a better life and i'm so grateful like she did not care that at one point we were homeless but anything to get us away from like the war zone that was like our house and like that's just what i knew like and as a kid, like, you still love your parents, like, you still love your dad, you still love your mom, and, like, you don't really see the bad in people as a child. And so, like, I always believed that there was, like, still, like, good in my dad. And every time he went to jail, I thought that, like, it wasn't his fault, and, like, I just was so naive, basically. So, moving on, I had a really rough life. I ended up just living with my mom. My dad was doing some illegal stuff that um, landed him in jail and he was facing up to 30 years in prison. So at this point, I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna see my dad again. Sad, but it's not like he's an active part in my life. So mind you, I live with my mom at this point. My sister's 
blowing in the wind like comes home every once in a while is like still in high school but we know she's on drugs and like she's just going downhill so fast and it is so hard to see someone you love go downhill so fast i'm at home with my mom and my little brother my mom works so much she's beyond stressed she's this angry person that i don't even know the littlest thing would set her off and i mean set her off like she would destroy the house like she was i can't even like believe that that used to be her like she's an angel now but people change and situations make people go crazy and at that point we ended up going with child services for a little bit and then we and my, my we my sing the ball and by we i mean my little brother and i and then we ended up staying with our grandmother who my dad was living with at the time this is right before he's going to jail for like 30 years right and um remember one day it's a friday and he's like i'm gonna pick you up after school um just like wait for me and i'm like okay i'm gonna wait for you whatever it's fine you know and um you know he told me like oh i'm getting a lot of money today we're gonna go buy you guys phones and we're gonna go shopping today and you can get whatever you want from the mall and i just remember being so excited that day mind you i'm living out of like a bag like i have no clothes luckily i went to a uniform school so i just could wear the same uniform and so i think i got out of school at like three and so that day i had borrowed my grandma's cell phone to take with me she had told me just take my phone today because i didn't have a phone she told me just take my phone and i said okay i'm gonna take your phone and three o'clock comes Four o'clock comes, five o'clock comes, six o'clock comes, and I just have a feeling that he's not coming. So I call my grandma, I say, Grandma, my dad never came, can you come pick up me? And then we have to go get my brother. So she comes to get me, goes get my brother. We go back to her house, the freaking SWAT team is there, okay? Like six police cars outside, like they wanna check her house, like it's just bad. Long story short, he ended up going to jail for up to 30 years. He didn't even do a year, but that's very traumatic. So after that, we ended up going back to live with my mom. Fast forward, I'm 15 and my mom is dating someone who started off to make her happy in the relationship, but turned out to be an awful, evil person that even if I saw him now, I just can't get over the hard feelings. And it was around Christmas time and I'm not gonna get into it, but just a lot of bad things happened. And for a long time, I'm talking up until this year, like I hated Christmas just because of everything that happened that Christmas. And like, it just made me hate Christmas. I'm like, how sad is that? Like, I felt bad for my like childhood self. Like, I hated Christmas. Like, just the thought of Christmas brought so many like painful thoughts to me. And that was one of like the worst years of my life. I feel like. And then um, my mom was just couldn't do it. She just felt like she just needed help to take care of us. So she sent us to North Carolina. My brother and I at 16 and 14. Or wait, 15. I wasn't 16 yet. I don't think. 15 and 13 to live with her friend whom i had never met and her kids who i'm not even gonna get into that but that was an even worse situation police at the house every day the girls there hated me and were so spiteful and nasty to me and like mean and my brother was like suicidal and hated life and i just took care of him and i did like all i could do to like make his life better because at that point i felt like i was just responsible for him and i was and i was his mom in that year you know i did his homework with him i would go to school with him i would be the only person that he would talk to he was so like depressed that he wouldn't even he would not even come out of the room to eat like i would have to bring a plate to him like and i was just also like i'm watering it down because i don't want like to just put all their business on blast but they like it was the one of the like i can't even explain like if you oh my god it was just so bad like the police were there every day like there was just so many bad things so my life at this point was just like bad i knew i wasn't gonna let it like shame me like i was so determined to like be like 360 around like oh my gosh the worst one of the worst situations like you could be in yeah and before leaving i was getting like so bullied at school i was getting bullied at school like on top of everything else i was getting freaking bully and i'm talking bullied like the gr girls and kids can be so cruel and just not knowing what i'm going through at home like 
war zone and people are bullying me at school on top of that so like my life was just a mess at that point so bullying to the point where security has to walk me to my classes in california so like bullied like just awful then i moved to north carolina bullying where i live bullying with everyone i lived with like every, i just felt like everyone hated me on top of trying to keep up with schoolwork and get all my credits transferred and moving half year and then my mom finally got a place in california and <sighs> sent plane tickets for us and let me tell you when she said I got a place. I literally walked out of the school I lived at. I was going to in North Carolina and it's such a small town that I was just able to walk home and I just cried and I prayed the whole way and I was like, thank you God so much. Like I'm gonna be out of this hell hole. Like I am so grateful. Like I just couldn't even put it into words. Like I told my brother, he was crying like, Lord, we were so excited. So we come back to, um, come back to LA and um a week later my niece is born so um i'm 16 my mom works two or three jobs at this point i just got back from out of state and we get a call from the hospital there's a baby here and you know my sister's there and she had a baby and we had no idea like she just she was not in a position to care for her baby and um my mom and i made the decision together to to care for her and she was extremely sick when she was born she was premature tubes all in her nose in the intensive care for um newborns called NICU she was in NICU for um a month and as soon as she came home I was her primary caretaker and I didn't go to school because of that. I came back towards the end of sophomore year, so I didn't go to the end of sophomore year. I missed a lot of my junior year. Yeah, I just, I sacrificed that, but I was willing to sacrifice for someone that I love and like everyone was so mean to me. Even in that point, everyone thought I went to North Carolina because I was pregnant and I had a baby and then I came back and this is my baby. And even now I still get comments. People are like, I followed you a long time ago and you just abandoned your baby. And that was never the case. I never had a daughter. I've never given birth. She was like my daughter and she still is like my daughter. And that's why I'm so close to her because literally she slept in my bed every night. Like I was like her mom. Yeah, and I ended up having to sacrifice a lot. Senior year, I was still taking care of her every weekend, nights. So senior year, I'm missing a lot of credits from leaving sophomore year and transferring junior year and not going. and. I'm missing a lot to the point where they're telling me if I don't make up 30 classes, three zero, 30 classes, I will not graduate. And you know what the hell I did? I made up 30 classes early. Early, okay? And I'm still really proud of that because every odd was against me and I still did it. And just graduating was just a big deal for me because um, I just had everything telling me not to graduate and I still was able to graduate and I was really proud of that. And just, that's a summary of my life, okay? Short, sweet, maybe not short, like short in time, but short in being condensed because like there's a lot of stuff. Okay, so back to my dad. You guys are wondering what happened with my dad. So basically at this time, my dad's not around really. I don't talk to him maybe once a month a phone call if you need something like so um around i was still in high school at this time i'm still in high school and um to make money i started getting into like ebay and stuff and i would um i would buy stuff and i'd resell it and then i started getting into like vintage like louis vuitton bags and i would buy them for a really good price and then i would sell them and I just kind of had my own little online business and that's kind of funny it's kind of why i'm still into like vintage like bags like i have some vintage bags that like i have in like a anyway so my dad would come to like my dad would ask me for money all the time and i just felt bad like i felt like it was my job to take care of him and like it wasn't so that whole time in high school he doesn't give me any money and money's not everything but when your mom works three jobs to support three kids my brother myself my niece and you can't even give me lunch money it's a big deal like i just think about how different my life would have been if my dad would have been around and would have helped like financially like i grew up at some really like poor points in life like now that i'm older i'm like i was freaking broke as a kid 
as a kid you don't think about that like i'm talking like it's so it's like embarrassing for me to say but like i know it's so like common like i didn't even have lunch money guys like i was freaking broke as a kid like i didn't have lunch money like i would get like one pair of shoes for like the whole school year and like i was just happy that like it didn't matter to me but like what having a dad could have done for me is like astronomical like emotionally like everything so like the older you get the more you start realizing like how much you need both parents and you know it's not like my dad passed away and he wasn't here he wasn't here by choice, you know? He had kids and still wanted to act like he didn't have kids. And so um, it just wasn't good. We didn't have really a good relationship. And so fast forward a couple years, I'm with Landon. We're doing our thing, we're living our life. We have our first apartment, things are good. My dad goes to jail again. And it's nothing new. He's been to jail a lot of times, you know? But this time he calls me and he tells me this big story and and he, long story short, he guilts me into thinking that like, if I don't bail him out, like he's gonna die. And of course you hear that. So I spent all my money and I bailed my dad out. And at this time, I um, my car was having like problems. Like, so I didn't have a car. Like I was willing to sacrifice everything to get my dad out of jail and I did. And um, from then on, that was pretty much the start of my adult relationship with my father that turned bitter and um to the point where i don't believe as of now that we will ever have a relationship again he begged me to bail him out and told me like oh i'll pay you the 400 dollars every month mind you i'm working two jobs like i'm working two jobs i'm hustling my ass off like i'm doing everything i can do and 400 dollars is a lot of money when you're paying rent you know i and i needed to get a new car like i just had a lot of things on my plate at that time and Landon was 100% supportive of me bailing my dad out because, you know, I told him everything my dad told me. And of course, you're going to believe your dad. Like, why would you lie? And I ended up bailing him out and being stuck with those payments. Mind you, not cool, right? As an adult, you can pick up things about other people. So I started learning that my dad was very, like, narcissistic and very... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. But if he, for whatever reason, would choose not to like people and he, for whatever reason, chose not to like Landon. And so he would try to like implant little ideas in my head and like he would say things like, Landon is cheating and that he had like proof and like just all these things that I knew weren't true because I trusted Landon. We had a great relationship. We were in love. We're starting our lives together. Things were fantastic. And I just knew it wasn't true, but it's like, you know they're not true but like why would your dad say that like why would you you know and it was just that thing and i never told landon because i didn't want him to look at my dad differently and it's just something that he, i would just deal with and i would tell him you know what you don't have to like him but you do need to respect my relationship and that was a big thing for years so i just chose to push a lot of things back and accept the bad with the good and I thought it was worth having a dad in my life and having someone to call dad and having someone I thought I could trust and like just having someone that I thought I could trust unconditionally and someone that I thought would never hurt me even though I had seen him hurt other people and I had seen him be toxic and ruin so many things in other people's lives I just thought I was exempt from that and I thought that because he's my dad he would never do that to me my mistake was thinking that because he was my father he would not intentionally hurt me and i was sadly sadly mistaken and just i think it was so much more that child me wanting to just be close to my dad and just wanting to have my mom and my dad in you know it was around the time we started doing youtube and i was trying to include him you know we would include Landon's parents and I wanted my parents to be a part of it too and I wanted that normalcy and I wanted that good relationship and I craved it so bad which is I guess natural if you go without something for so long and you see how it is and at that time I was getting to know Landon's family and I would see how his dad was and it was just like a whole new world to me and I'm like this is how like dads are like your dad has his own house like your dad like you can call your dad for anything and like he'll be there he'll answer like whoa like it's just a new like thing to me and i was just i craved that so bad and i think that's i know that's where i was wrong because even though he was my father i shouldn't have let him get that close to me just based off the relationship 
our blood biological relationship because um, he has hurt me more in the last year than I even thought possible. He has caused me so many tears. He has said so many hurtful things to me. Like, I can't even, I don't even want to say, I, can't, I, fit, I really couldn't even say the things that have happened or else I would we'd probably get like demonetized, this video would get flagged. Like, it, it has been some raunchy like things some hurtful, like heartbreaking things. And like, I feel like I'm babbling now. I just, I'm, I'm trying not to say too many details without trying to filter it too much. You guys understand? I just feel like my dad broke my heart before any man could. And like, has honestly brought Landon and I like so much closer like just the things that my father has put me through these past like year and years of my life is just awful but just as an adult I just thought that I could like have that still and I just would do anything to have that and I made that mistake and I trusted him and he took advantage and I'm talking about like like stole from me like lied to me like harassed me had to block like five of his numbers, like was calling Landon, was just trying to ruin my businesses, like was, and it's just so crazy. And I just never thought, I just didn't, I couldn't fathom that, that someone that helped create me could hate me, you know? But I just thought that like, he hurts other people, he's awful to other people. There's no way he could be like that to me because I'm his daughter, I'm exempt from that. And I was wrong. And honestly, like my dad broke my heart as a child as a young girl and like as an adult like he broke my heart all over again and i just feel like mm, <laughs> i'm gonna cry don't cry <sighs> come here why do you look like that yeah, we let's close out together you okay yeah i love you i'm gonna cry baby um before we close out i'd just like to say that <gasps> Babe, don't lean this what, way. What? This chair. Oh, oh, well, dang. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, before I close out, I would like to say that everything that she talked about is the exact reason why I want to be such a great dad and such a perfect dad because I want her to be able to see what that's like and to see the type of impact that has on a child. If they do have a great dad, a fun dad, a supportive dad, someone who's your best friend, but also a your stable dad. discipline, but most, yeah, most importantly, there and around. Um, and I'm definitely gonna be there and around him. My sole mission is to be the best father possible, and I will not fail you will my be. child. I love I you. I promise you're gonna be the best dad ever. Thank you. All right, you wanna close up? I love you. I love you. Thank you guys for always watching and tuning in. Um, this is definitely a more serious video. We'll get back to the more fun and. I know. You I know. cried. I literally cried? cried within the first like three seconds. Like I was talking about my sister and I just can't even talk about anyone. I was Aww. literally crying. Cried about my mom. Cried about everybody in here. I cried about you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Tears make you stronger. Well guys, now you know everything. We love each and every one of you and we are so grateful for you guys to be on this journey with us. The most important journey that both yes. of us have ever experienced. And we're just ready. I love you guys. Make sure as always to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the gang and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Roses are red and violets are blue. Why does every love song remind me of you? Why can't I make my mind up and decide what to do? I'm trying to write these songs, I always end up writing.